Something unexpected happened recently and I'm as shocked as you probably will be. And it has made me rethink our entire FIRE strategy, which stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. My teaching partner took some leave. It was the week before the school holidays and the week just after the school holidays. So I worked full time for those two weeks and I loved it. There were so many positives. I felt like I rediscovered my identity again. I did less unpaid work at home and I was excited to see my boys at the end of the day and my mental health improved dramatically. This was because I am an overthinker and when I was at work, I was too busy to worry about overthinking everything. When I'm at home, I spend so much time overthinking everything, it's exhausting. I didn't realize how bad it was. I often say that I don't get much done because I'm so busy, not busy physically, but busy in my head. And there were downsides too, of course. My three and a half year old would have to spend more days at childcare if I worked more. After school activities like swimming lessons felt more challenging and it was harder, of course, getting things done around the home. I've always said that the RE retire early part of FIRE really wasn't for us. It was more like work optional, but I also thought I would enjoy not working. I thought I didn't like my job. I'm sure that I want to continue to work, so it means we can slow down our FIRE journey a little bit. I don't want to work full-time just yet as I don't want my youngest in full-time childcare, but we have increased his days to four days a week just as a trial, so I can work more days to see if I'm still feeling the same about all of the positives. So what does this mean for our financial independence journey? Well, I think we might fall somewhere between the slow fire, barista fire and flamingo fire realm and probably more slow fire than anything. The Fioneers wrote an article recently about the difference between coast fire and slow fire and I'll leave a link in the video description. It explains that slow fire is not a specific amount of money or financial strategy. It's a philosophy that focuses on using the financial freedom that you gain along the path to fire to design a life you truly love. Like slow living and slow food, slow fire focuses on intentionality. Slow fire adherents are intentional with their money, but they focus on using their money and time to live a better life that's aligned to their values. They do this without sacrificing their long-term financial stability. Slow fire is focused on working less or doing something that you actually enjoy to generate income. They do this so that they can invest more time in the things that they enjoy and value. Slow fire adherents know that they don't need to wait until they retire early to do these things. And of course, if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it really does help to support my channel. I love this tweet by Four Pillar Freedom. Overrated metric. How fast you're able to reach financial independence. Underrated metric. How enjoyable your journey is on the way to financial independence. Zach recently wrote an article about the shockingly simple math behind slow fire and I'll leave a link in the video description. He wrote that when you pursue slow fire, you typically experience a lower savings rate for two reasons. First, you give yourself permission to embrace part-time or low-stress work. Second, you allow yourself to spend more money on things that bring you joy. For me, that's travel and experiences with my family. Zach talks about how slow fire is gaining popularity in the financial blog space because more people are beginning to see that it's possible to have an immense amount of freedom and flexibility in life without being financially independent. And I do also think that a lot of my changes in thinking have come from reading the book Die With Zero by Bill Perkins. I made a video about the book that you might want to check out after this video. Bill writes that just realize that time moves only in one direction and that as it passes, it sweeps away opportunities for certain experiences forever. And that's what I'm trying to be aware of. There are certain experiences in my life now that I can never get back. No amount of money will get them back. And I think we're in a position to be able to spend more money than we currently do. My husband still wants to fully retire in seven to eight years time as we originally planned. So maybe Barista Fire is what we will be once he finishes work. Barista Fire involves work part-time to cover a small portion of income while the investments cover the rest. Essentially, the investments would cover my husband's income while I work to cover the rest. And then there's also my favorite Flamingo Fire, which I can't go past mentioning. This version of Fire was created by Money Flamingo and I'll leave a link to her blog in the video description. Flamingo Fire is a variation of Barista Fire. For Flamingo Fire, we would need 50% of our Fire number invested. And with the rule of 72 and an estimated rate of return of 7%, It would be estimated that our portfolio could double over 10 years and we would reach our FIRE number without contributing more. So our Flamingo FIRE number would be 625k, which is 50% of our FIRE number. Once we reach that amount, we would stop contributing to our portfolio and it would continue to grow. And after about 10 years without contributing,
contributing more, our portfolio would reach our FIRE number. So in this scenario, my husband could retire once we reach our Flamingo FIRE number and I could work just to cover our expenses until that portfolio doubles. I think this is super achievable and takes a lot of the pressure off because I've predicted that Flamingo FIRE is less than three years away for us. These portfolio projections are based on a 7% rate of return. Coast FIRE is less than a year away for us, but this also depends on the market, of course. Lean FIRE, which is $900,000 invested, is about five and a half years away for us. And then we should reach our FIRE number, which is $1.25 million invested in about seven years' time. And our progress to FIRE as a percentage shows that we are 50% of the way to Lean FIRE, which is our bare bones essential expenses covered. We are 36% of the way to traditional fire and then 25.82% of the way to fat fire. Our fire crossover point shows how our expenses are tracking against a 3% and 4% safe withdrawal rate. I like seeing this visually as we can either choose to decrease our expenses to get closer to fire or increase our investment or both. Though I don't think we have much wriggle room in our expenses these days and I also said I think we should be spending more money. And this is what we spent in July. Although we do have the opportunity for our expenses to drop considerably considerably once we're not paying childcare or our mortgage. And you will find my financial independence trackers and other trackers in my Etsy store. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook.